UFC <laughs> Mexico City, February 24th. Back there with a bang. You can't do a card in Mexico City without Yair Rodriguez. Here he is, co-main event, Brian Ortega, Chapter 2. Yair, great to see you back. It feels like a long time because we haven't seen you since that title fight. How you been? What's going on? I've been great, brother. I've been just uh, focusing on my training camp here in Mexico. I've been almost two months uh, close uh, for Mexico City. Actually, we're like driving now to Mexico City. We were like running uh, the volcano, uh, 15,000 15, feet and hitting some bats up there. So we're going back to the city now to get adjusted to that elevation and finish up camp there. Great stuff. Great stuff. Look, when this phone call comes for this rematch with Brian Ortega, I mean, you guys fought two years ago, but it, it, it didn't even last a full round. We know what happened. Why did you say, yes, let's do this a second time? Uh, honestly, because they didn't give me any option. It was this or it was this. And that's it, you know. But uh, honestly, as I, as I talked to Brian Ortega right after the fight, I hope to fight you once again, just if it's necessary. As we as we talked the first time, like only if it's a title contention fight or you know something that is gonna put us right there. And I'm guessing this is like uh, the right opportunity again, you know. And um, well, here I am to fight him again. There it is. When you go back to that fight, an injury ended it. We did see some action, but not enough to necessarily know where that fight was going. What did you learn about those four minutes you shared with Brian Ortega? Yeah, I think Brandon Ortega is a really smart uh, fighter. Uh, he knows what he's doing uh, perfectly. And uh, I think he's going to try to use his range to to get close to me, take me down, and uh, get the fight over, like submit me probably in the first or second round. But I don't think that's going to be uh, easy for him to happen. And, uh, you know, it's Mexico City. So I think he's going to get like really exa exhausted trying to get me in the first couple of rounds. And uh, I'm gonna get him. When it's all, when you talk about this idea of fighting at altitude, you fought in Mexico City many times, three times under the UFC banner. How different is it really, at fighting at a high elevation in a very important fight like this one? It is completely different. It's extremely different than fighting in another place. You know that's why um, fighters from many other sports. They come and train at high elevation you know, to go and perform better. If you come from a sea level or from another place to this elevation, you'll feel it even walking, walking upstairs, doing any anything, you'll feel it. So it's necessary for you when, when you're able to fight in a, in a place like Mexico City to come and adjust for high elevation. Regardless of the results, regardless of what happens to the fight, I just think it's something that's necessary to do in order for you to perform well in Mexico City. Well, you've long been a, a poster boy for the UFC in their hopes to invade Mexico. And like I said, you fought on cards there before. Now that we've had UFC Noche, now that the the takeover really appears to be real, what have you seen in Mexico of the changing of the culture? Always a great boxing culture, the best for boxing. How much has MMA on a grassroots level have you seen really start to take over in your home country? It's huge. The growth in Mexico is huge for MMA. Uh, there's a federation now. Uh, I think the sport at some point is going to become Olympic. And, uh, you know, it's just many, many things happening here. Many other companies uh, making fights. Many, not, not only Mexico, but Latin fighters are, are getting to to be more recognized more and more in different companies. I used to think uh, the sport is like, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I have to really say it you know, because it's, well known that the sport is growing massively the last years. When you hear Dana White talk about wanting to come back with another celebration card in September and put it in the sphere, do, do you go, yeah, I want to be there. I need to be there. How much would, would that arena change the focus of a fighter? Because we've never seen fights taking place at something like that. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think it's important for the fighter. You know, I think it's important for the people for the show, for the company, and be part of that is something great, you know, but for the fighter, the fighter has to be focused on what he has to be focused on, the fight, and doesn't matter where you fight, 
a backyard, fucking street, anywhere. Like, you need to be ready to go and fight anywhere. So, so of course, for the opportunity, it's a great opportunity. And I would love to fight in the, in the sphere in Las Vegas, and especially because of big night in Mexico. And uh, yeah, I'll be waiting for that call. 100%. All right. All right. Let's look back on your title loss to Alexander Volkanovsky. This will be the first time we've seen you since that fight. When you look back, what what went wrong in your eyes? Um, I used to think not many things went, went uh, wrong. thing is, well, Alexander Volkanovsky is a great fighter. He did an amazing job. His corner did an amazing job. And uh, I didn't listen to my corner as I supposed to listen to them. You know, and uh, I think that's what happened, honestly. You know, I can talk about anything technically or whatever. You know, my training camp went well. My wake up went, went, went well. And um, I don't have nothing to say, but like he did an amazing job. He won the fight. And I'm moving on. The competitor inside of you, uh, <clears throat> how badly do you want to get him a second time? Of course, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I wanna, I wanna fight him again. I think it's gonna um, end up happening, you know, regardless of the time, you know, time lapse. But I think it's gonna happen again. It's just a matter of time. Uh, we're gonna see Volkanovski back this weekend, of course, at UFC two ninety eight. And Ilya Taporia has been so confident he changed his Twitter thing to say UFC champion already before it's happened. When you see that, when you see him saying. I don't need to fight Yair. He's already lost to Volk. I'm ready for McGregor. What do you think about that? I you think he's a pussy? I hate, I fucking dislike the guy. I think he's illusional. But honestly, I don't even give a fuck about the guy. I would, I would love to fuck him up. At some point, I think we want to face each other. Unless he doesn't fucking want to. But that's all what I think about him. Do you think he's talented enough to win the championship this weekend? No. I don't think he has a, enough talent. I think he's, uh, as I already say, emotional. I get what he's trying to do. You know, he's like, uh, like degrading something, but it's like a tiny line in between doing that, being confident in yourself, and trying to make you believe, forcing yourself to believe that. And when you actually don't believe it, you know, it's like delusional. You know, and I think I think he's gonna. It's gonna come back to reality after this weekend. Can can you be too confident in this game? Is there such a thing as overconfidence in MMA? Overconfidence, I think, I think it can happen. You know, overconfidence. I mean, I think being confident is perfect. Overconfident is never good. You know, I think we have seen that several times before. Uh, yeah, yeah. You of course came onto the scene and. You became a fan favorite right away because you're so exciting, dangerous. You make incredible fights. But as you mature now in your 30s, when you look back, like how, how different of a fighter do you think you are today from that young kid that first came on the scene and was spinning around and making all of these theatrics? How much do you believe you've grown over the years? I think I used to have adjust a little different to the sport itself. And I became less aggressive and more technical. Now I'm focusing, focusing more in like small details. And before I used to go on and like jump around like with the fights and do all this crazy stuff. I, I can still do that 100%. There is no clue about that. I'm just trying to use it when it's necessary or whenever I want to show my show. My. I've got to believe, though, the warrior in you does like it when you get into battle. The Max Holloway fight you had was an incredibly right. fun fight to watch. Is it sometimes, I mean, like, when you're in the midst of that, is it fun when you're in a war? Is it enjoyable or is it chaos? What's it like on your end of it? No, not, not like a chaos. You know, it's just, uh, it's like, a, it's a fight going on, basically. You know, it's something inside you that, of course, you you feel pain, you're hurt, you're like dizzy, you do this, that, whatever. But a part of you is like, you know, you can do this and more. You know, you can keep on going. And then you hear your family, your father, your brother, come on, you can do it. And it's that that part of the game where, like, you're fighting against yourself more than fighting against the other guy. You know, because 
technically the level in the UFC in many ways is like uh, like similar, you know, many aspects. But the mental part, I think, is one of the most important things in the game. How hard is it to come off of a loss like you're doing in a title fight? How how has the mental reinvention been like for you? Was it quick? Was it easy? Um, it was it was kind of quick, you know. Uh, I of course I gave myself time to feel uh, sad, but not for a, not not for a long time. You need to move move quick. You know, to you need to move quick from your wins. But you need to move quicker from your losses. You need to move quick, learn from them, feel bad. It's okay, no problem. Um, just take a look at your fight, see what you did wrong, think about the training camp, whatever. Then learn, learn about it, move forward. And that's what I do. Indeed, indeed. Now, when you look at this second chance against Brian Ortega, is this a number one contender's fight in your eyes? No, no question about it. You win, you get the next title shot. Yeah, I think that can happen. I think that's realistic to happen. I just come from fighting Kanovsky, and I just think uh, um, this this fight is going to be really is existing in the the flyweight division. You know, I can uh, rematch can happen in between both. Can I? Do you and Brian have a lot of respect for each other? Is there a good rapport there? Yeah, I have tons of respect for Brian Ortega. I love for him, for his family. Uh, nothing bad to say about the guy. When it comes to this idea of, of being back in Mexico City and, and getting to fight in front of the, the home crowd once again, do you prefer that? I hear so many fighters in all sports saying, when I fight at home, whether it's their hometown or their home country, that pressure comes upon them. How does that work for you? Uh, no, as I was telling you, it doesn't matter where I'm at. Like For me, it's just another place. Of course, I'm happier because more people uh, are going to come to see me, You know, more friends and family, which makes me excited but i don't care about the place you know i can fight anywhere in the world and i will never like let that weigh on myself you know something that makes I, a lot of sense know. okay you win this we're talking about potentially another title shot when you look at your career and what you are trying to accomplish and i know we always think about it in terms of wins and losses but you're also a, a family man this is also a business sometimes it's about money do you need to wear the full UFC championship to be able to retire and know that you've had the success that you hoped for when you started this career? Uh, no, I don't really need to do that. I don't, I don't let that weigh on myself. Uh, I think I already put pressure on myself enough to, to, to do what I'm doing. So of course I'm pushing myself and room for myself. I believe in myself that I can go and achieve uh, the goal of becoming uh, a undisputed champion. But I won't be traumatized if that doesn't happen. You know, I know I'm trying hard. I'm doing my best. So I stay with that. Doing my best. I know that I can accomplish it. I know that I can do it. But if for some reason it doesn't happen, I won't be traumatized after my career is over because I know that many things can happen in between here and there. And uh, I won't blame myself. I won't be too hard on myself. I, I, I have been hard on myself for many years for many reasons. I don't think I don't think that's something uh, healthy for yourself. So I, I won't do that anymore. When you look at this fight, the idea of all action, but sometimes winning is more important. What does this fight look like, February twenty fourth? Yeah, it's really important for me to win this fight. You know, it's gonna ensure me that my next title contention, next title fight, and I'm I'm going to really push this guy. I play. I truly believe that I can get this fight over in the second round, so I'm going to really push him, and I think people is going to help me out with that. But for Ryan Ortega to feel the pressure, not only not only my pressure inside the fight, the fan pressure, and Mexico City's high elevation pressure as well. There it is. Back in the home country, in front of the fans. We can't wait to see it. Yair, thank you for your time. Best of luck to you, man. Always great to chat with you. Looking forward to this one in a big way. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.